Let's look at the world. This is every country in the world. That's where Canada and Italy are, and this is where the world average is, including the poorest countries. So we're about 30% higher today than what the world can sustain. We actually consume 32 times as much as an average person in, a, in an undeveloped country. If you go back to your grandparents and look at what it took to support your grandparents in terms of energy and goods, we, you can easily see that we do 30 times more than them. Here's Victoria's dirty secret. They produce a million catalogs a day. There are 18 billion catalogs produced every day. They, they actually cause a lot of deforestation and about 19, I'd say 17 billion, 900 million, 999,000 of them get thrown away after five minutes. Current buildings are stupid. My car has more intelligence in it than any building I know of. Our problem isn't cars, our problem is buildings, but our buildings are stupid and our cars are clever. In the last 30 years, cars have become so clever that they are 100 times less polluting than they were 30 years ago. I mean, my house can't tell me what it's doing. You have three choices with a building. You can tear it down and rebuild it. We know how to build buildings efficiently today. But that's costly and it's environmentally unfriendly. And it's not going to happen. You're not going to tear down Milan and rebuild it. You could try and retrofit a building to create more energy efficiency, but then you'll get 25%, and you know, it's very expensive. But here's the idea that, that really resonated with me, and the idea is around skinning buildings. You have a huge opportunity to do very cheap retrofits on the outside and make new skins that can completely transform the mass of this building. The big mass that was a heat loss or a heat sink becomes an asset in a skin building. So the idea is, and you can get 70% improvement in performance of this building, 70. Kyoto was thought of in, 19, in the 1980s. It took till 20 years later to actually get into law, accepted, and to become actually implemented another 10 years. And it's a big compromise. Well, 30 years from now, it'll be too late to do anything. So, in some sense, we need to move much faster than our governments are capable of. There's a lovely story about seat belts. In the United States and Canada, seat belts came out and everybody saw these, the way people tried to sell them, was by showing pictures of people decapitated, cut in half, you know, lying on a road, having been thrown out of a car. And after all, even after legislation, there was only a 15% pickup for seatbelts. People didn't use them. Well, they changed tactics. And they said, you know what? We're going to not do that. We're going to try a different way. We're going to say, you know what? you should put a belt on your little Johnny in the back seat because little Johnny's going to fly through the window if there's any accident. So they did this. And there was a big pickup there, but very quickly little Johnny said to his parents, um, put on your seatbelt. Why are you not doing it and I'm doing it? I did that as a kid. I remember telling my mom to put a seatbelt on. And it took her to hit the windscreen once before she started doing it. Think of anything that you can do that is actually just doing something will eventually bring about change. There's a village near Manchester called Ashton Hayes. A thousand people, quite wealthy. And they decided they're going to go carbon neutral. One guy in the village said, let's do it. So he mobilized the whole village. And the Financial Times got wind of this. And all of a sudden, there was a three-page article in the Financial Times talking about this village that's going carbon neutral. And guess what? The next week, there were 550 villages worldwide that subscribed to doing this. We're linking them in a country without borders. So each village gets its own calculator, and then they aggregate up to a country without borders. And that started. The nice thing is the, the English government does a huge amount to subsidize things like this. 
in the United Kingdom or in Canada, there are over 90 programs for helping an individual reduce their carbon footprint. All, you know, subsidies that you can get. They are in, in our case, just in Ontario, in seven different ministries. You have to be a genius to apply for them. It's very hard. I was asked by our government to come up with a plan for how we would actually put pr a price on carbon and how would we actually get citizens involved in this. What we've done is, is proposed a single website where when you sign on it's voluntary so instead of it you are forced to pay tax you now have an opt-in much like a Web 2.0. You opt in for what amounts to frequent flyer miles but it's for green. There's a single currency of green called Crediti Verdi or green credits. And anything you can do that's green, that's subsidized by the government, has a premium of green credits. So if you buy ground source heating, it's 2,000 green credits. A hybrid car is 3,000 green credits. A local apple from an orchard within 100 kilometers is one green credit, etc. Whatever we want to. And the key is that those green credits are tax deductible. Every euro of green credits is a euro of your tax. Now, if you instituted something like that, very quickly people would get it. Whoa, I can reduce my taxes this way. I don't care if I'm green or not, I'm going to do this. What's the downside? You know, I'll subscribe to these programs. I have to change the windows in my house anyway, that sort of thing. So what we've built is really a mixture of a Facebook application, a net social network, a carbon calculator, and a news and uh, content feed. So picture this as your footprint. If I come to you and say, that's your footprint, you know what, if you buy my trees, you can take that all away. Well, you'll say, you know what, I'm going to fly, start flying more, I'll just buy more trees, I've got enough money. Big deal. So offsetting is really the last thing you do in a chain. You first start biking, reducing your footprint, you start eating local food, you put in geothermal in your house, you buy a hybrid car, whatever, in ascending order of difficulty. And you might purchase offsets to become impatto zero, as it is in Italy, or zero footprint. An offset needs to be additional. Let me give you an example. If someone tries to sell you offsets from a windmill in, in, in southern Italy, I bet you it's not additional because the person running that windmill is making a lot of money and is doing that anyway. And if you didn't have offsets, they'd still be doing it. On the other hand, there might be certain wind projects that would not have happened had you not had an offset. Um, so additionality is probably one of the most important things. Additionality means the offset's really actually doing something. You also need offsetting, like any production of carbon or taking out of carbon is, a f is like making any product. It needs independent verification, it needs standards, it needs registration, risk management and project management. So our projects, for example, involve recreation of uh, forests in British Columbia, um, recovery of methane, tire recycling, and so on. Now, so you can imagine a world at 2050, what it would have to look like. It will be radically different than the world we're in today. And either we do this, or we cook somehow. <laughs>